Hola, SAP developers. In this SAP Tech Bytes, we will explore how you can create derived business events using the RESTful AVA programming model to extend the out-of-the-box <coughs> events available in SAP S4 HANA Cloud, meaning that we can include additional data in the events generated by the system. Also, we will see the event filtering mechanism available in SAP S4 HANA Cloud, which leverages the extension context attributes that we define in our Cloud Events payload. Finally, we will combine the SAP S4 HANA Cloud Enterprise Event Enablement functionality with SAP Integration Suite Advanced Event Mesh to publish dynamic topics in AEM. Hola, SAP developers. Imagine this. You get an integration request where you need to sync across some customer material information to a particular customer. Now you start exploring your integration options, and you know that there's a customer material API that you can consume. But also you know that there are some events available. So for example, here, we are in the SAP Business Accelerator Hub, and this is my change event for customer material. You check out the payload, but then the payload is actually missing some data. You realize that you need to send this partial delivery information to your customer. They need to receive this information. And well, you know how this goes, right? Like um, you can have, for example, something like SAP Cloud Integration for event mediation, right? Like you can receive, consume that event that's generated by SAP S4 HANA Cloud, but then you would need to actually call the API so you can extract all the data, right? And in SAP Cloud Integration, you will end up doing some transformation and then sending across that, um, that customer material to your customer. Now, what if I would tell you that it's actually possible to extend this particular event so that it includes all the data that you need? Well, let me show you how. For that, I need to go to the Adobe development tools. Before I start, I want to make a, a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not an Adobe. But this is what's cool about this. It's so simple that even a non adapter like me is able to create these objects. So first, we got to make sure that our business object is actually released. In this case, we're lucky. The customer material, it's, it's an object that has been released. And you can see here how there's a behavior definition for it, right? In the behavior definition, you can see these three events. So they are exposed for us to actually modify them or extend them, OK? In this case, the creating change is what we're interested in. So once we know that our business object is available, then we go ahead and create a data definition. In this case, this is a CDS view entity, which is reading from that interface that I showed you before. I've included the normal fields that are included in the out-of-the-box event. But apart from that, I've also included here the partial delivery fields that I mentioned before. Okay. Now you'll notice that in this data structure, there are two annotations. OK, so the first one, the event context attribute, what it will do is that it will actually expose the customer ID as an extension context attribute in my Cloud Events payload. Now, that information, I can then use it for filtering. And I'll show you that in a bit. We also have a second annotation here, which is the event context position. Now, in this case, that particular annotation is specific for SAP Integration Suite Advanced Event Mesh. And what it will do is that we can actually use that data, so in this case, the customer and the material by customer in the topic where the event will be published. I will show you that also in a bit. But then once I've defined my data structure, I basically in, go and extend the behavior for that, uh, for that business object, right? In this case, I've actually created two managed events, one for the create and one for the change. In both cases, I'm going to send the same data. Right, And now, to put it all together, you end up creating an event binding, where you end up specifying your namespace, also the, the object that you are actually going to uh, send across, the operation, in this case, the change. Um, and here is where you also create a version for that particular event. Right. So I previously activated all the objects, and, there, and this event itself is now available to me in SAP S4 HANA Cloud. So I'll go to SAP S4 HANA Cloud, so uh, then I can um, add my topic to the channel binding. And then what will happen is that whenever I change uh, customer material, then SAP S4 HANA Cloud will actually send that event across. Okay. 
So in this case, it's taking a bit longer for the topics to be loaded, but there it is. You see, the set customer material change. That's the that's the uh, topic that um, basically you can see the, the namespace that we define in the object, right? So once I've, uh, I've added it here, now, whenever a customer material is changed, then SAP S400 Cloud will actually send two events, the out-of-the-box one and the custom one. But I did mention that we were interested in sending this only for a particular customer. And now you can see here that it, I have two additional properties. Those are the ones that are that are there because of that annotation, the first annotation that I show you, right? So now I can do some filtering based on that, on that field. In this case, I'm just going to do equals a particular customer ID, right? So in that case, there we go, create event filter, excellent. So now, What's going to happen is the that SAP S4 HANA Cloud will only raise that event if a customer material for that particular customer has been changed. Now, I also mentioned that we can include some payload data as part of my topic. And in this case, what we need to do is enable dynamic topics. And you'll see how this topic will end up changing. Okay, so keep an eye on that topic. And I will click here, enable dynamic topics, and you see how it has changed. Now, the topic where this will this event will be published will actually include some data from the payload. In this case, it will be the customer ID and the customer material change, right? So let's go ahead to S4 HANA Cloud and change uh, a customer material so that we can actually see the data. Let's go one, I'm going to change this to 88, so say something, and then save this. Excellent. So this will trigger an event and we can see our events here. I'm in the event monitor in SAP S400 Cloud, and you can see that there are two events about to be sent. We refresh again, yeah, acknowledge. So what this means is that they've actually been sent to SAP Integration Suite Advanced Event Mesh already, right? Now, I'll go to SAP Integration Suite Advanced Event Mesh, and here, as you can see, I've already connected to, to the broker itself. I created a queue, this queue that you see, which, has, which is already subscribed to the out-of-the-box uh, event, and also, to the um, to the custom topic, right? So let's start consuming, and we will see two messages here, right? You can see there are two messages here. So the first one is my custom message. The one at the bottom is the out of the box event, and you can already see some changes in the topic, right? Like the topic that where it was published, you can see that the one at the top actually includes some uh, payload data, the customer ID, and the customer material. That is not possible with uh, out of the box events, right? There's no payload data in it. Now, apart from that, you can see that the payload, it's much larger. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy both payloads, and then I'm just going to paste them here so that we can easily see them. So on the left-hand side, I have my custom payload, and on the right-hand side, I have my standard out-of-box uh, payload. And it's clear from here, right? We have two new extension uh, context attributes, the XSAP customer and XSAP customer material, which are the ones that I can use for filtering within SAP S4 HANA Cloud. Apart from that, I also have the partial delivery information, right? You can see this is the value that I entered before, the 88. So in this case, my out-of-the-box event basically includes all the information that I need in order to complete my integration scenario, right? So now let's go back to my diagram, right? I like diagrams, so I created another diagram here. Um, and in this case, you can see how, for example, by using uh, the app development tools, I was able to create a derived business event, okay? Apart from that, I was able to basically extend the, the, the event. And in, in that case, I'm actually including all the information that I need, right, in order to complete my integration scenario. So now, SAP Integration Suite Advanced Event Match will receive this event that contains all the information, meaning that, for example, the integration flow that I can build in SAP Cloud Integration doesn't have a need to actually go back to SAP S4 HANA Cloud in order to retrieve more information. With all the information that's included in that uh, custom event, it will be able to actually send that payload or send that information to the customer. No need to go back. Apart from that, we can have, for example, a cap application consuming events from um, from uh, from advanced event mesh and have all the information it needs in order to continue processing. For example, Nico will show you a bit later how how a cap application can get communicating with advanced event mesh. 
And last but not least, we can also, for example, use an event to trigger an event, a process, sorry, in SAP build process automation, right? This is simple by just uh, uh, creating what's called a REST delivery point. And in essence, that process, for example, will have all the information that it needs in order to complete the process. No need to go back to SAP S4 HANA Cloud. We've seen how by creating the right business events, we can easily extend an out-of-the-box event that provides me with all the information that I need in order to complete my integration scenario. I hope you find these SAP Tech Bytes useful. Ciao.